Welcome back to the Bible Reading Project. It is Wednesday Hump Day with my new BFF, <laughs> Brianna Shelnut, hanging with me all week long. For those of you that jumped in, Mr. Ryan Holdeman could not be here, which he is my BFF. Are you okay with that, though? Doesn't yeah, I'm okay you? with that. Okay, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> uh, he couldn't be here. Ryan, shout out. I miss you, man. But um, I made a phone call. Do you know how it went? I made a phone call to probably the sweetest, most encouraging, pretty, kind-hearted. She's tiny. <laughs> She's like a big midget. She's little, <laughs> sweet as a button. We're the same height. Yes, I know. <laughs> so I texted her and I'm like, hey, I call her Nessa G. Nessa G, can you be on the Bible reading with me? You know hey, what she said? What? Sure. Never says no. Always says yes. So I brought her on Monday. I don't know if people watched Monday, but bless her heart. <laughs> My hair's not right. I smell like Mexican food. Yeah. I don't have makeup on. Yeah. I feel ugly, and I thought, no, but you stepped in. <laughs> Professional you are. Yes. Have you ever done radio or anything? We heard you no did radio. a movie, I'm, and I'm going to do that. But uh, you've done a little acting. Have you ever yes. done theater, like live yes. theater? Oh, good. Yeah. You, do you remember a play, like a favorite you did? Oh, goodness. While you think about it, did you know I was famous? Really? Mm -hmm. In the first grade. <laughs> I was in a... I had 27 speaking parts in the first grade. Isn't that amazing? That and is, you know what my suck. speaking parts were? The first right. one was vitamintas, vitamintas, chew, chew, chew on vitamintas, vitamintas. I don't even know what it meant. What was the play? I don't know. <laughs> I was just the, I was the en engine of the train, right? <laughs> chew, chew. And that was my line, vitamintas, vitamintas. And all of us marched in saying it was, I guess that was something, take your vitamins maybe. It's right. the 1970s. But then the other one was uh, it, we were doing a reenactment of the Boston Tea Party. Like, we're, okay. we're ready to be free from England. And right. my line was, I abhor the idea of separation. I don't right. even know what that means. And then my next line was, taxation without representation is unjust. I agree. That's from the first grade. I still remember <laughs> those lines. That's amazing. So your play, do you remember any theater you were in? I do. Um, I did the Seussical which is a play for Dr. Seuss characters oh, and stuff cool. like that. Uh -huh. I did that in middle school. Do you remember a line from it? Oh, goodness. It was so long ago. We were in an ensemble. Okay. So, like, I was little. I was right. in, like, sixth grade, so I didn't really have, like, yeah. speaking parts. But the song we sang was Here on Who. Here on Who. Mm -hmm. Could you hum a few bars for us? I would love to hear it. Sure, I can Go sing it. it. I can sing, sing it for it. you. Go for it. <laughs> Got a singer on Go for it. I want to hear you sing. I've heard it's good. Here on who? The tiniest planet in the sky. I know. That was it. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. Have you ever tried out for a worship team or anything? No. <laughs> you ought to. And then you could get rejected, come back on here and go, I got rejected, fall apart. We could talk about how God spared you and got you off the streets and now you're happy again. What a, right? What a... What a great story to tell. So I got a few questions. I want people to know you a little more, okay. right? It's your first time on. You've agreed you would host. Yes. I'm excited. But part of the, <laughs> part of that, we picked on your mom a little bit. Yes. So sweet. Um, but I found I found a few. Uh, the yes. model. Do you model? No. No modeling. <laughs> well, that kind of looks like either it's real hot. I'm just trying to be cool. Just trying to be cool. <laughs> but I like that. I think you could be a model. Thank you. Like, I really like, I think that's kind of model-y looking, don't you? Like, I, that ought to be like in J. Crew mag or something. Or something. Beautiful. What is J. Crew? It's like a clothing store. <laughs> Or what's the one all the people like? Sorry, real... sorry. What's a magazine? Yeah, that's, right. that's how old. That's how old I am, right? I don't even know. I'm gonna go look at something. Can I go look at something? I'll be sure. right back. You just sit there and chat with yourself. I want to look at something here. I just want to see something. I want to because now that you made me feel bad that it's so I'm so old and I talked about a magazine. Um, I, I want to go ahead and say. You had 104 other people that liked that. That's a lot. Oh, that's I don't really get great. more than six. <laughs> and Six likes. Uh, beautiful you are. So thank you for hanging out. Thank you. But this one, next one's not beautiful. Oh. This next one, it, it, it's going to speak a lot Scared. about your personality and your husband, Robbie. Okay. Great dude. But I, I need to know what's going on here because you look scared. 
<laughs> I don't know if you're scared or happy because I can't see your mouth. But tell, I, tell me happy. what's going. Where are you and what's about to happen? We are at Andretti's. Okay. And I took Robbie for his birthday because he likes cars and racing. So that's what we did, and I lost, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, I got to ask a question. Yeah. Did you cheat? Do you cheat? Will you cheat to win? <laughs> are you that kind of wife? Like I'm going to cheat to win? No, I'm competitive, but I won't cheat. Let's ask Nessa. Do you cheat, Nessa, <laughs> to win? So sometimes she cheats. That's probably why she's never on here anymore. I cheat all the time to win. You cheat? If it's my family, they know I'm cheating. Like, I make the rules. I don't care. I'm going to crash you. Okay. If you come by me, I'm going to do a pit move. You're going into the wall. Paul Paul's winning. Joey's about to marry into the family. You okay. break rules, too? I don't need to cheat. He doesn't even need to oh, cheat to okay. win. So when we go to Florida on a trip, we'll put a hundred dollar bill on it. We'll crash each other. All right. Clearly, so I'm the most saved person. You are, in this and room that's why we because I don't race. cheat. So he he won, but you, you love racing go karts and stuff like that. That was the only time we went. Okay. And um, yeah. So let, let's learn just one more amazing fact about. Okay. You. Give me uh, uh, your favorite hobby. What do you enjoy doing in your spare time? Hmm. I like watching movies. Okay. I like watching TV. What kind? What kind of movies? You uh, love love triangle movie dramas, comedies. What do you like best? Definitely bro more romantic okay. type rom movies, rom coms. Okay. Um, I don't like scary movies okay. at all. Oh, bless your heart. Terrifies me. Favorite rom com before we read the Bible. <sighs> Thirteen going on thirty. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. I know all the rom-coms because I'm raising girls, <laughs> right? right, right. right? So a lot of girls. <laughs> let's jump in. Matthew 6, we've been talking about all week. I've enjoyed it. Here's something to kind of catch everybody up to par. 12 times Jesus mentions fatherhood. Mm -hmm. We chatted a little bit about the disconnect between God as a judge and a creator versus a father that rewards you. Yes. And the bridge between that gap is the enemy, the world, the agenda of the world doesn't want me to ever know God as a father because it forces me to trust, to see Christ. Mm -hmm. So it's just much easier to keep the judgment of God as creator so I never have to talk about Christ. And then we talked about worry. Mm -hmm. We talked about all of the things that come that we, you know, don't really understand how valuable we are. So let's jump in. Matthew chapter six, we're asking you to read it all week long. But uh, I think it really gets interesting here when Jesus <clears throat> begins to look at, and I'm going to start reading again in verse 25, where you read yesterday. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I tell you not to worry about your life. That's all I want to read because I want to ask you, that just seems impossible to me. Same. I, I don't understand how Jesus could just I, not even try to read anymore. It just... It just seems impossible. How can a human? I'm. I've raised four daughters. Mm -hmm. um, I've had money problems, health problems, ER visits, and then I read. Uh, so I just want to tell you, don't worry about everyday life. And then he just kind of sums up your food, your clothes, and look at all the animals. But when I'm in the middle of hell and 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 I, I'm worried, I'm not looking outside going. Look at that little bird. Right. <laughs> I'm always just not even worried. Because he, he, if my house payment's not paid, it doesn't matter to him at all. Mm -hmm. Or if my wife gets a bad diagnosis, that little bird doesn't care at all. Right. So it really is hard for me to go, uh, yeah, just looking at animals really doesn't help me that much. Mm -hmm. And then he says this, can all your worries, so I, verse 27, so obviously Jesus says, don't worry, but uh, I know you are because mm -hmm. you're a human. So then he just says, add them all up hmm. and see if they can even add one moment to your life. Wow. So I don't, I, I wrestle, I really do wrestle. It's not just a Bible reading thing. I really wrestle with don't worry. And then I say, that's impossible. But then if I, if I tag verse 27 with it, it's almost like he knows we do. Yeah. Because he said, just add it all up. Add all your worries up. And then he says, but I still want to ask you to do something with a worry. Did it add a single day to your life? Mm. Right? Okay. So I'm like, well, no, probably probably shrink some days to my life. Right. And then he goes in again. Why do you worry about your clothing? And then he asked me to look at the lilies. You said that, the grass and all of that. I'm like, that really doesn't help me at all to go out and look <laughs> at my yard because when I see my grass, I just think I need to mow. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Then he goes, but if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and thrown in the fire tomorrow, and then I guess he really asked the question, verse 30, 
Why do you have so little faith? So worry and faith. It wasn't, I don't think Jesus was telling me to deny all my problems and the stuff, but he was saying, why do you worry when you have faith? Mm. Could you explain that in your thinking of a generation of young people today, the pandemics on us, the, uh, you know, the, the economy is inflation's rising, housing costs are double, triple, uh, people can't even afford to make down payments, um, where is our world going? You're, you're about to birth a child. What what does the future look like? Yeah. What does the what kind of education am I going to homeschool or not or public school? And then all the medical questions. Will you be vaccinated? Will you not? Do you right. believe in it? Do you the pressures of motherhood? Uh, if, if I have to stay home and not work, can we still afford it? And if I do go to work, uh, how much is it going to cost for date? You know, that's life. For sure. <laughs> how, how would you tell a young mom, a young person? that it's possible not to worry. Mm. How do we get there? Well, I would say, and once again, like we already kind of talked about earlier this week, um, I'm 22. Mm -hmm. So I was born 1999. And I wasn't even alive for two years before 9-11 happened. And then the economy crashed. And then the pandemic. (laughs) And it's like, so... My whole life, professional worry. There has just been sure. things to worry about and things to have trouble for. And even though I haven't had much experience, you know, on this earth, there's just been a lot of turmoil. Mm-hmm. So what I would say is that the best way to keep me from worrying about the future mm-hmm. is to remember what God has brought me through in the past. Okay, and to constantly look back and realize, man, when I was trying to buy my house during a pandemic, when I was going through. Um, job loss and, you know, worries about our health and everything like that. God has been faithful and has brought us through every single trial, every single problem. Maybe not in the ways that we always expected or wanted, but always we were brought through. So for me, what really helps, um, I'm, I'm a little bit like you, Mm -hmm. uh, looking at Atlas, Mm -hmm. my dog, lying on the floor sure. and not caring about sure. where his meal is going to come from. Right. It doesn't do much for me. Right. It does a lot for my mom, but it doesn't do much for sure. me. Sure. But thinking back to how God has brought me through mm-hmm. and how God has been faithful to me and Robbie, mm-hmm. that helps me not worry about what might happen mm-hmm. or what's going, what's mm-hmm. going to go on in mm-hmm. the future. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it definitely empowers me to be able to, not fear so much bringing another little person into this world. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I'm looking up something because as you said that, a scripture popped to my mind. Um, I want to see if I can find it real quickly. Yeah. Uh, it's in the book of Titus, um, and, I, and it kind of goes with um, worry. I have to see if I can find it. I hope I can. If not, I'll just say what it, it was. Yeah, I found it. Okay. Awesome. So in, in Titus chapter 2, so my question was, I just don't see how it's possible not to worry. And I and if you knew me younger years, classic worrier. I am brilliant at it. Oh, if it concerns you, I'm your best friend. I will help you and encourage you out of a hole. But when the problem is my own, right. I pout. Where's God? Why me? What's going on? Right? Like it, Anytime worry becomes internalized, it's a lot harder to deal with it when it's somebody else's worry. Because we go, just get over it. God's a good God. He's got you. Mm -hmm. You know, press through. Pray harder. And I'm like, I appreciate all that, but it's in me, the worry. Right. So uh, I'll tell you what's helped me. And I love what you said. I do just the opposite, kind of. I, I love how you say, I go back and rehearse everything God did for me. And it brings you, you know what I do, what I've started doing? I've got a lot of those stories, right? But sometimes in the middle of worry, it's hard to shake yourself to remember when because it's so pressing now. Right. Right? So I guess it was about 10, 15 years ago. I was thinking, how do, how can I grow old and, and have peace? Like, I, I don't want to drink my sorrows away, and I don't want to just – have to get on medication to try to get anxiety to go away. Right. I'm not against help from doctors, but so I did something. I started looking at old people hmm. that, that served God 
because every old person I talk to, you know, when I say old, I'm going to go 75 and up. Sure. So I looked, and I primarily started in the 90s. I, I went 90 and down. The people I knew that were in their 90s. My, my dad turns 85 this week. Um, I looked at them, and I would ask them, tell me how you made it. Mm. Because I knew if they were old and they still served God, right? they got something I need. That means they went through stuff. Right. They've gone through trials. They've seen God perform. And, and so I would look at them, and then the thing I liked was, tell me how you got through it. Mm. Right? I know how I got through my stuff, but right now my immediate thing is, how I got through the last one's not working this time. Right. <laughs> So encourage me. So listen to what this scripture says in Titus 2. It says this. Teach the older men to exercise self-control. They must have faith, sound faith, to be filled with love and patience. Similarly, teach the older women to live in a way that honors God. And then these older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children and to live pure lives in the same way, encourage the younger men to do the same. Even Timothy says there's something about old people being the example of overcoming. That's so good. And yet our generation just pushes them aside. Yeah. We never see them on stage. They're not hip enough. They can't wear skinny jeans. Uh, You don't have the look. And so churches today, and I'm going to ask you this question because I think it has a lot to do with worrying, a generation that worries constantly. Don't you think it's easy to worry when all we promote, I'm going to say all, but a lot of what we promote in church is the hip, cool, young, skinny jean, 20, 19 to 24. You really don't even have much of a story yet, but you're the ones on the stage and singing and shouting, and I'm watching you sing and shout. But it's the lady out here who's 92 years old, who's buried a husband, lost a son, been through all kind of hell, right? and she still serves God. She still reads her Bible. She still witnesses. She still prays for grandkids and great-grandkids. Those people just bring me great peace, right? like great, great peace of trying to honor that generation. And so I think there's been a disconnect when Jesus says, don't worry. And you're like, I'm 22. I'm bringing a kid in the world, la, 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 la. <laughs> But I said to my mom and dad, I said, well, are you, you know, what do you think about this pandemic, right? Because that's all we've talked about for a year and a half in our right. country. I love what my dad said. He said, well, I was, went through World War II, went through Vietnam, went through Korea, went through the bird flu, the swine flu, the, you know, and he just yeah. listed about 30 pandemics. Right. And he said, I'm still here, right? Well, that just gave me such hope. Because you look at this pandemic and think, oh, my God, I could die tomorrow. Right. And then here's an 85-year-old man that just never quit going to Longhorn, never really wore a mask unless he was asked to, and just lived his life. And there's something about that that just draws me in to not worry. So how do you think we – or what, what do you tell a generation out there that has pushed old people aside is almost invaluable mm-hmm. – while we struggle to find peace, but we don't find it, what what would your wisdom be to people out there when we say, or you say, I'm 22, I want to teach you how not to worry? Mm. What would what would your advice be to that? I would say, surround yourself definitely with older people who genuinely want to invest in the younger generation, mm-hmm. because I've seen it both ways, where I have a passion for my generation and for what's going on. And I've tried to have old people speak into my life and they kind of feel like, Oh, her generation is a lost cause. Sure. Do you see all the things they're doing? Mm-hmm. Have you seen the latest little oh, Nas absolutely. X video? <laughs> like, you know? Absolutely. And so it's hard. Definitely try to find people who mm-hmm. want it both ways, mm-hmm. who want to learn from the younger generation, but also who want to invest in the younger generation mm-hmm. and for you to also be willing to listen. Yeah, I, We're young and we don't know everything mm-hmm. and that's okay. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to get wisdom from older people mm-hmm. and from your parents mm-hmm. and from these people who have been through it before. Mm-hmm. 
But just being willing to facilitate that relationship, going to a church where there are older members there mm-hmm. instead of, you know, just trying to That's keep good. keep to yourself and keep to the younger people with the skinny jeans and the yeah, <laughs> everything, sure. no. just branching out and being more open to that. Yeah, it's all needed, right? I yeah. mean, we just need each other. So I want to ask sure. you one question before we go. In a time of worry, mm-hmm. it hits hard. You, you feel it. You feel the pressure. You've already told us what you do. You mm-hmm. You rehearse your testimonies. But do you have a go-to person in your life? Yes. Who is it? I have, I have a few. Okay. Um, <laughs> you don't have to tell us their name, but oh, you okay. know who they yes, are. Yes, yes. Like, it, and it crashes, I know who I'm calling. Right. And what does that do for you? Um, it gives me peace. Okay. And hopefully that person always turns me back to Jesus. Yeah. Because... He's the one. He's so he's good. the only one that can fully fix and understand the problem and give me peace. Um, I think that surrounding yourself with people who turn you to Jesus is very important. Yeah. Have a relationship with Jesus, of course, mm-hmm. and be consistent in that. But also surrounding yourself with the right people is very important as to not worrying and have people who point you in those directions where they're like, hey, that's remember good. what Jesus did. That's good. Hey, remember who Jesus says you are. Hey, remember that God has a purpose and a plan for you. Um, I feel like that gets me out of the hole as fast as possible. I love it. I love it. Love it. So, hey, you worry in today. A couple of things you can do. You can pray. Jesus said, give all the worry to me. Number two, why don't you look back over your past and say, has he ever done something before? Mm. And if you say, I don't know, I can't think of anything. Well, reach out to us. Reach out to Ryan. Reach out to Brianna. Uh, we'll, we'll inspire you, encourage you, and help you because I would encourage you, you need a go-to person in the middle of worry. It does the world for you. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.